So, Moravianka is going to be our first map for the people that don't know. We have cap number two in the open side, usually protected by a spotter in the bushes, and then cap number one, kind of shielded. I want to see, like you said, if Stavage Squad is going to be bringing those double STRVs that you talked about. Hmm, let us see what do we have here. No, this is completely another kind of story. This is something that you have uh, on Prokhorovka, usually a uh, huge mass of visits and budget, so huge rotation, uh, push force. They can actually rotate any side of the map and strike anywhere really fast. Like the upper cap is an definite option. It's maybe even, uh, it's maybe even more risky to go for the lower one with this kind of lineup. So here we go, Kasna crew versus Savage Squad, round number one. Kasna crew on the defense, Savage Squad on the attack. Already you can see Savage Squad massing up for that number one base, but Kasna is a little bit more split. Kazna is split as usual, they are trapping and they are trying to dominate the lower part of the battlefield because they do not want to confront them directly here. They're going to strike them, probably trying to manipulate that middle passage and shoot them in the back. But they need to be really fast because the cap pressure will be on. And Savage Squad is known for doing some pressure like this. Look at this. We already have one, two tanks in the cap. Vizes are climbing up and they're going to do a cooldown against any possible suspect. Izne is a crucial factor here because he needs to keep them in check. He needs to keep them in line with his frontal armor. Already the bad shots from Kazna crew from the forest are starting to clip out on towards Dani doing that 5A. And he's taking a pummeling so far. Haiba picks it up. That's a quick kill for Kazna crew. But the cap is still on with freedom and Latenser in that one. One. The question is, if it's Savage Squad with one tank down, can actually pull it off? I think they kind of sacrificed Dani here to make a block for these budgets to cap, but I think it's really too much because Kazna can actually now just come and overpower them. Look at the advantage in HP, and that one gun will mean a lot in this. I mean, these budgets of Kazna, they have full clips now. Here comes Piotr Dorg. There we the go, full reset, reset immediately. To freedom. The other batch had already getting reset as well. Savage Squad now forced to push out of the cap. Piotr is going to be their first target, but they've bled so much HP already. It's only a question if they can actually pull this off. Piotr is in a strong position as well, shielded by the batch rats from Kazna crew. Nexus from the top in the M48 pattern coming in as well with some shots. The push comes from Savage Squad on towards Piotr's position. We can see Latenser is already being dropped low, and this cap tactic from Savage Squad seems like Kazna crew. Had a pretty good read on it. Yeah, this is really, really a nonsense play. I must say, I'm really sorry for Savage Squad here. They're mutilated and absolutely annihilated here on the map. There is no stress left. I mean, Kazna will probably have seven guys left. And Durst will even survive with 97 HP. So Raven is hiding behind this one little building, trying to maybe steal one kill if someone of Kazna is kind enough to give it to him. Yeah, Raven, the last one standing here for Savage Squad. Kazna crew coming out strong. Nexus with the triple. Finishing the round. I was so quick, I didn't even have time to put it on. No mercy here on Kazna's side, and that my prognosis of 5 to 3 might not really happen if Savage Squad keeps playing like this. I was too quick, I didn't even have time to. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. Yeah, but that was <clears> a, <throat> a great first round <laughs> from Kazna crew. There's top damage, but very well spread between the, with the likes of the other players like Nexus, Yizna, Piotr. Everybody from Kazna crew surviving, so. I mean, this this should definitely put a smile on your face, Ducky, considering I have six Kazna players in my fantasy team, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. you have six. Can we not talk about that? Like, mistakes happen, man. Like, sometimes yeah, you yeah, make yeah. a mistake. Ding, Ding and Kazna are really similar, so you have I'm six I'm just looking Ding at guys. the camos, man, to be honest, and, yeah. and then mistakes happen, you know? Like, it didn't look very well. I'm not the smartest yeah, when you, when you My when brain's you see, a little bit slow. When you see your time. ratings after this week in Eastern Fantasy, oh. then you're going to say mistakes, Kev. <laughs> What Man, the mistake I'll, I'll, make. I'll still be ahead of Ryan, so... That's not hard. No, but like, you know, it's something, right? True. True. You never know. I mean... We need to see what is Voivoy doing. Like, he, he is a sneaky one. He is a sneaky he one. He picks random people and succeeds, usually. That's true, but now Savage Squad is going to get to defend on Moravanka. The question is how Kazan Crew is going to approach their attack. I don't think they're going to be cap rushing. They're, they're a slower team. He usually Kazan likes to approach through the forest side and fill the terrain out and then do the rotations. Like, they're not a kind of team that usually does a full YOLO on uh, Murovanka. Before, when Stefan was there, they were really blind shooting the bush as well. So they were looking for the those uh, passive spotters and their clearing terrain, like, really, really great. They changed the approach lately, but I would say that they're really... I don't know, they mastered their forces. And uh, even without Stefan, they're actually performing much better in this season. And I don't think they're any, any, in any kind of hindered here on Murovanka. Like, their tactics on uh, multiple maps are really, really nice. Good approaches, good studies. I've even seen them utilize some tactics from CIS yesterday when they played. And it was all executed really well. 
and let us see Haiba on i7. That's the standard pick of his for uh, this map because he can use it, use it usually on that uh, cane line uh, for a cooldown action. Diplomat, Piotr on VZ. That's kind of a normal commodity now for all of the maps. It's like overall tank you had like 113 before. Now everyone is using VZ because of that nice gun depression and gun accuracy. On other side, Savage Squad playing with the mouse. Latensir already picking up some random damage while he's approaching the building here. So Kazna was waiting for this, and this is an advantage because if Bacha, as example, pushes Latensir, this shot might be a crucial one. Yeah, Latensir tried to take that E1 position that we see uh, being played a lot by a lot of teams. And, and then it, you can't blind shoot it, it's hard, but uh, actually I saw yesterday on NA somebody uh, bring him down to like a one shot of HP, so Latensir needs to play that safe. But uh, they have changed up a little bit. Yesterday they had double mouse, today they only have one, and they had that play in the T100. Today it's going to be freedom. Yeah, I mean, double mouse is really slow when you play it. I, I don't like that kind of commitment. Uh, and when you play a mouse, you really know, the enemy team really knows how will you be positioned. There is all, not so many places you look beautiful and Mojo absolutely sh stunning and shining. Mitch, I don't want to talk about it. Let's focus on the match because we're just picking some blind shots right now. Uh, well, they're taking the Ishan side control, that forest area with Durs, Betsu and Nexus. The question is, can they clear out freedom from those bushes? You can see he's not actually sitting in the bush, but behind it, because the T100 has such great camo. It's a brilliant camo. It's a popular called Pancake because it's totally flat out. I mean, there is probably not a light tank in any tier, in, at least in that tier, that can be uh, with that great camo value. Also, it's really fast and it has decent armor, so it's really common that it bounces shells, which is the worst part. Like, when you shoot a light tank, you expect you will pan it every time. Nope, this is not that kind of a light tank. Yeah, it's also very flat, so like a lot of shots, like when you're aiming for it, actually end up dropping low and hitting the, the tracks, just critical. Yeah, and he drives and auto-aims and hits. Yeah. So if you're a budget fighting him, it's actually not an easy situation always. No, I played that one without V-Stab personally because it has such great dispersion. He's the, again, coming out in that STRV, doing some damage already on towards K1. The only problem with that uh, T100 light is uh, his DPM. But after this patch, even that is getting buffed. So well, it's going to be a monster. Just not DPM. The pen on, and the pen and the long rest distance shots are mm. not that great on it either. Like close range? Pretty good, but like when you need to shoot long distance, nah, the accuracy just doesn't work. It would be too much because you would have like full server of uh, T100's red line sniping invisible. It would be really too much. That sounds fun to me. Yeah, really. But for now, Kazan crew doing their usual where they just spread around the map, try and take some control, try and do some line shots. And at one point, you will see them move another great shot there coming out from Yizne in that STRV. K1 needs to play that position careful because we have seen Yizne. And then SCRV do some phenomenal things in the last few matches. He's a Swedish vehicle after all, and he's a Swedish Viking, so he must play that STRV like a boss. Kazna is mastering their forces here from the lower side. This is the only approach they can actually take. Once they put Haiba on this position, guys, which you can see now, uh, they really had no choice, because otherwise uh, everyone would be useless. Nexus is the only one keeping the backline free for Kazna and he will snipe any force of Savage Squad in the back if if needed. And Kazna is just relying here on cap pressure. So it's gonna be only Haiba. I don't think anyone will join him actually. He's just a bait. They're gonna try to do more damage when someone peeks to D cap. My bet is they're going to try to lure out Latensir. Yeah, Latensir is definitely the one that could get those reset shots, but he needs to be careful not to uh overextend for that because high by that IS-7 will punish him if that happens. Let's but not forget only also one very important thing. Savage Squad technically here he has one tank fighting tank less because Freedom is in that T100 light. It's a good DPM machine, it's a, it's a fast light, but uh, really fighting tier 10 mediums and heavies, just not that. No, Haiba still on the cap, 1 minute and 12 seconds left at this point and now Alpha trying to get a shot on towards those 5 A's. Latensir peeks out, spots out Haiba. And he needs to be careful for that reset. Really careful, actually. Yeah, Alpha, I don't think he can even reset from this position here. When you have a solo tank uh, like uh, Haiba is in his I-7, even with HE, there is a high chance his turret will just bounce. So someone actually has to take a bullet and come and reset him manually like Luti now. But Luti will not take only one, but probably two and maybe even three for that pleasure. Luti Pavlo takes one from Haiba, takes two from Yizna in return, does get the reset, but at what cost? Takes another one from Yizna going back around the corner. Danny in the meantime taking some shots as well. That's Nexus from the back lines. 
getting some nice connections onto the back of that mouse in that K6-7 area. So now Savage Squad bled around 2,000 HP for a singular reset. And Hybas, he's happy. He's, he can cap again. Savage Squad is getting farmed here. There is 4,300. Never mind that. Even more now. Almost 5k difference between Kazna and them. And there is still four and a half minutes to go. You might say even the game just started. And Savage Squad is almost checkmated already. This is a situation I see no way out from. And I wish I didn't say 5 to 3. Yeah, Alpha taking another shot there from Yizn as well in the SCRV. He's having a field day right there from that position. Just making connection after connection. Alpha takes now another one on that pattern. And the HP deficit just keeps getting bigger and bigger as Piotr and Nexus are the only ones from the side of Kazna crew to take any damage. Haiba, when he was, while he was resetted, he even didn't take any damage in that I7. Like, it's a monstrosity. It's in really good cooldown position there. Nicely sloped armor. It's hard to handle it. And Savage Squad definitely has no answer for this. In one moment, they will actually have to push out, but their HP is already gone. All the main battle tanks that are supposed to push in the enemy forces are on the brink of death. Kazna crew showing us how to break a, break a classic, classic Moravanka defense. Latenser takes more damage. Raven actually joined him in that position, but he took so much on the crossing. Takes even more. Down towards 268 with 20 seconds left on the cap. Kazna crew showing a masterpiece of how to break down this defense. Durst picks up Raven, takes some damage in return, but worth it nonetheless. They have plenty to go around. And now Savage Squad trying something, trying to push on towards Diplomat, but there's only six seconds left. Sec oh, the Amorak on the scale one to just add insult to injury. Diplomat getting a shot on towards Dani, and this is the end for Savage Squad. Haiba peeks out, removes Dani from the game. Luti follows him quickly to the grave, and that leaves three tanks from Savage Squad versus, again, seven from Kazna crew. I mean, there still has a potential chance to die if he keeps peeking, but uh, Alpha is alone on seven guys here. I mean, this is really one-sided battle so far. Murovanka is definitely not a map for Savage Squad at the moment. Vetsov picks up his double, and that makes it 2-0 to zero for Kazna crew. It looks so easy, man. It like, does look very easy. It does look easy, but you have to be really good to make it look so easy. So Kazna is doing rather well at the moment, and Savage Squad is kind of playing passively, and look at that beautiful young man. But we need the camera a bit lower, because the real deal of this, uh, of this uh, tie is the message it sends. Come on, Ducky, show it really to everyone. Mate, it's, it's already <laughs> here, okay? I'm not a party girl. Hello? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Come on, life is plastic. It's so fantastic. You know that. You know the lyrics. <sighs> I, I don't know and what you're talking about. And there we go. About. Kazna, four guys in the top. Again, two of them about 3k damage. I guess the entire team has well spread damage here because... Again, seven guns alive, seven guns yeah. left till the end of the battle. Yisla in that STRV really did a good job to make those connections time after time again. Stop giving me that <laughs> cheeky smile, I swear. Um, Yisla did a really good job there. I honestly, Mojo, stop looking at me like that. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm not happy about this. This, this day better go quickly. Kafna Cruz doing very well though so far to make it this quick. Two good rounds showing how to break, break it. <laughs> To break a classic Morovanka defense, <laughs> we're moving on to Ruhrenberg Mojo. Try and keep it together. You okay, man? <laughs> no. no, you don't look okay. I'm not okay. <laughs> this is. Mate, just wait till next week. I swear to God, I will take revenge for this. Rumor coming out. Kasna Crew is going to be defending first. Savage Squad is going to be attacking. This is going to be a hard nut to crack for them on the offensive side against an experienced team like Kasna Crew. Well, so far, uh, Savage Squad has 0% of win rate in attack, so not so well for them. Kazna is slightly better. I mean, both of teams barely play the map. So I would say this is kind of an open slate. Anything can happen on this map. I was expecting kind of a possible trigger here, but Murovanka already gave us a hint what's going to happen in this match. Yeah, so on the attacking side, they're coming out with triple I7 and 5A, two bats and a, and a Foch B. This looks like a through the middle attack again. Yeah, it's something they're fond of, I would say. But Kazna has a good rotation force. As far as I saw, they have 250 Bs, right? So it's going to be really easy to intercept if there is that kind of YOLO. Uh, let us see. Piotr is in T100 light. It's going to be a super fast spot. He's going to discover all the enemy if they're going uh, down through the middle. 
or not, and he sees only Raven, so he will know they're either pushing the lower lane or hiding up. That's why they left Diplomat in the back, that's why they're not committing 100% of the forces there. Haiba, as the slowest tank, Mouse already started pedaling long ago toward the enemy. Yeah, Haiba is just at that fountain area right now as the rest of the Savage Squad team is now approaching through the south side of the map. Piotrin at T100 going all the way down to K0. It's a question if they can kill him. Raven already letting off two shots. No connection so far. Takes a big but one in return. But Piotr while on move. That's what we were talking about. This T100 monster. Ooh, but Nexus doing his AMX 50B overextended slightly. Latancer getting the better of him. Nexus down to 260 HP. And that's not good for Kaza Crew. But Raven in the meantime gets absolutely removed for Savage Squad. So an even trade nonetheless. I would say that was not a slightly because he put the uh, leg in a piranha pool, but he is somehow alive, probably left a bone on a finger. But uh, Raven there, that's a rip. That's already a tank down, so I would say Nexus can pull back and support his teammates from the back, but uh, Raven can just support them vocally now. Piotr is actually pushing over in towards Latancer. He's trying to go up and over, he's trying to sit safe. That's a fight in the bottom, and in the meantime we have the fight here between the FE215Bs. Piotr trying to go up and over, but Danny picks him up. Haiba needs to be careful because the Forge Beast wanted to clip out on his side. Haiba, mate, you have to look towards your side. Alpha getting connection after connection. Already got two, has three shots left. One now, actually, for that mouse, and then he's going to be back on reload. Savage Squad actually doing a decent job so far on their attacking side. Yeah, but still, the HP is equal here. Uh, the only problem is for Kazna, they need to utilize Haiba a bit more in the battle because from the lower plane, he can just get side shots from time to time. And this Porsche will have a reload rather soon. Like in 15 to 20 seconds, he is going to be full and he's going to pressure the Kazna again. There is a chance for Kazna actually to lose this because the HP is starting to shift in Savage Squad's favor. Yes, yeah, Savage Squad so far winning the trades. They did lose Raven, but in return, they've picked up Piotr. They've dropped Nexus low as well, but now Skay1 taking a lot of damage in his IS-7. Vetsu in the meantime caught up between the buildings. Kazna crew now bringing the pain with Durs from the side, getting a nice clip in the AMX 50B Alpha, trying to get the connections on towards Diplomat. And the trades we were speaking about, Mojo, Savage Squad starting to lose them. 2,000 HP now, the vantage for for Kazna, a bit to Moza, to Moza trades here, but we will see what will be the continuing for Sky1 is on 90 HP only left, but there is a couple of guys from Kazna that are rather low and easy to take out. FV heavies, I mean, we haven't seen them used in this much of uh, numbers in a while, even on Ruinberg, and I, I believe by the stats I've seen on that uh, new Super Conqueror, that's gonna be a beast, probably to be taken a lot of maps. Haiba now down towards 43 HP in his mouth, that's Alpha pushing forwards, he's trying to kill him, but he cannot get the connection, he has one more shot, he picks it up, but bled a lot of HP in return for that. They've lost K1, they've lost Dani as well, Luti Pavlo now getting shot in the side by Diplomat as Yizna gets Alpha, and that's the beginning of the end for the side of Savage Squad. In the end, Kazna Crew just showing off with the better traits and removing gun after gun as Yizna picks up his triple. That makes three of them the last man alive. A diplomat and Durs practically had 100% of HP till the end of the game, so they always had a Joker they can put in the play here and put Savage Squad on their knees. Haiba actually tanked that damage like a boss there in a mouse. I think he probably has like minimum 3k block, minimum. Yeah, he had a full Forge B clip on him. Two of them, much. more or less. <laughs> yeah, uh, Yizna again, top damage coming out, very strong performance for him. Nexus even with that low HP managing to do 2.8, also impressive. Yizna another player that was playing only tier 8 in the previous seasons, uh, same like Papa Pavian for Utopia, excelling and becoming effectively probably the best player of the team at the moment, maybe Maybe after Nexus. After Nexus, think. probably. But uh, still, it was surprising because the guy was only playing Artis, Light Tanks and things like that. And he's now playing pretty much everything same as Papa Pavian. And they're always somewhere in the top of the damage. So really kudos to them. Good plays. So 3-0 to zero now in favor of Kazna Crew. Runeberg defense coming for Savage Squad. This is where they're going to pick up that one round that I talked about. Theoretically, they should, but you never know. I was convinced he's going to be on Murovanko also, but I was surprised. So what can you do? We can watch and see, and maybe they have surprises. Um, they had a good opening in the last round, just like the trades at one point, they just lost them straight up. El Kazan so far never won an attack in this season on Ruinberg, so that's not the best treat for them. Before, uh, when they were playing Ruinberg in old seasons, they were usually using that trick with flipping vehicle and trying to do that on an upper cap. Behind, they had some pretty ingenious way how to get it to the cap because that was the main thing back then. But this is completely another set of plays, and let's see what Kazan has for us now here, because there is a high possibility they just pick this map to have 1-1 one, one map and just move on on the others they want to focus on. Yeah. 
Um, but let's see what they bring on the attack, though. Maybe they can pull it off nonetheless against Savage Squad on the defensive side. Kazna on the attack. Four mouses, double bat, and a TVP. Hey, caramba, I think we've seen tactics like this before. It's mainly... Uh, Tornado energy back then, yeah, Hellraisers. Let's, let's block a lot of damage and let's push from two sides. But we will see what Kazna actually chooses to play because it can involve a lot of mind play also. Well, I think Savage Squad is going to be defending. They have a pretty mobile lineup themselves, but Kazna crew biasing themselves towards the north side of the map for now. Double mouse in the middle. Double mouse going north with the rest of the bats. It's all one of the versions of this attack. You push some mouses through the middle. They attract a lot of attention. You shoot uh, the defender on the A-line from the middle with those mouse tanks. And then you rotate everyone else toward the cap. You push with fast tanks on A-line. Put the mouses on the cap itself. And you try to win the game like that. But Savage Squad seems to be aware of that. And they already left not one but two tanks on A-line. Which is not a standard defense for Ruinberg. You have Danny over there in K1 as well in the Type 5 Heavy. Um, meantime, Diplomat and Piotr are pushing down the middle road, trying to catch them off. Perhaps Haiba and Yizne are now spotted out. And we have to see how Kazna crew is going to approach this one. Yeah, Kazna is going really, really offensive. And they are going towards the cap, as I said already. They will take some damage and bleed a bit. But already, look at this. Danin, his budget, took a blind shot from these guys because he was on... Uh, Position that was easy to intercept, but Type 5 Heavy, he is going to be a real problem to deal with for Kazna. Even when they push with Bachats, he can effectively delete one of them. Yeah, Piotr in the meantime taking tons of damage in his mouse already dropped below half. That has a dead gunner as well. Raven though in the Amex 50B getting caught out by these mouses. In the meantime, still Alpha, Luti Pavlo looking towards the middle. The cap is on though. 50 seconds left on that one. Kazna Cruz so far doing so good. Raven in the Amex 50B taking more damage. That's why I said you have a crossfire by these two mouse tanks and no one is even challenging the guys in the middle. Raven is caught in the middle of the nowhere with the 50B. That's a French get tank, guys. Like, he has no armor. Why is he there? In the meantime, Kazna Cruz mediums are starting to rotate around. You can see them, the triple hit squad moving towards the south side of the map. Diplomat is pushing through the middle. And let's listen to Kazna Crew and see how they're approaching this attack. Triple entry, yeah. Patch it open. Patch it open. 1 will die. We need to clip something else. 50B minus one. I'll give it to Danny one. Then we clip for fucking mouse. Danny. Bye. Bye. Got the mouse down. B minus one from here. B minus one. Go back of four. Go find him with Skoda. Go find him with Skoda. He's one shot. He's one shot. Can you finish, mouse? Maybe. Yes. Oh my. Nice. Nice. Go find him. Nice. Go find that B. And we're good. And we're good. B shot my, uh, me uh, once. You need here. to play with Nexus. You need to play with Nexus and Diplo. Nexus has the round. Nexus has the round. Type Five shot. I'll push forward. There you go. B, 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 right side. He has it. Two seconds. Nice. I'm on reload. Type will probably finish me on next shell. Can you give him one, maybe? One. No, 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 no. You want, me, you want me to move closer for them? Yeah, go, yes, go. yes, yes. Go, go, go. Can you give him Type shot. Diplo, you can just push. Yeah. You can just wait, push wait. from two angles. Don't wait, just go. Nice. Type did fire, so you type can move will fire two order. more on Diplo. Yes. And Diplo needs to angle to a bat. Nexus enters and finishes. Well, type shot. shot. Type is aiming you. Watch that is 800. Nexus is. Wait spotted. for me, wait for me, don't push yet. They can't, they can't push Nexus. Tell me when good. the type shoot. Okay. I'll push yeah. from did the left. Did they spot side. Nexus? Yes, yes, yes they did. spot. Okay, they're pushing you. They're coming. Dolan on my side, Dolan on my side. Yeah. Easy, you can just. He, can, he can shoot through the street. That's what he's aiming for. Yeah, he's aiming. Blow. Doesn't matter. If he moves, yeah. Nexus can just out run him. Danny is going forward. I Doesn't matter. You, you will, you will, you need to go, easily go, go, finish that shit. I'll push him from the left. He will want this. my He's aiming my gap. I'll shoot Type. Type push. Type shot. Type, type, type shot. 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 Type
track. Drive him around the building, let's see. Well, good stuff there from Kazna crew. A well-organized team speak as well. Pretty decent here. I mean, good execution. Savage squad losing so much HP for nothing in the start of the game. That really surprised me. They had all a lot of potential to rotate to make this game challenging. You saw how it cl came close even with this. If Raven actually had an HP to deal with it, this game might have been actually Savage squad one. Yeah, if Raven didn't take so much damage in the beginning. Um, might have been different. 4-0 now for Kazna crew. A whitewash. Uh, yes. You're completely right. <laughs> Mate, like, honestly, <laughs> you need to get over yourself. <laughs> I can't. It's glittering. Uh, so, really, I didn't expect this. I told you already. I expected the hard design on washing to me like that. I'm scared now. Uh, I expected uh, a lot of 1-1s one in the start of the game and maybe a breakthrough on mines, but we are coming now toward the third map and it's 4-0 already to Kazna. It's complete total annihilation. It's not even the whole game. It's just a match. Yeah, that's very true, Mojo. Um, wh what are you pulling your eyebrows for? Nothing. <laughs> Jesus. Completely nothing. A great damage there from Diplomato and his mouse. Over 5k, 5.1 actually will round it up to the top. 5.1k there, he was constantly in the middle. He was sniping the tanks in sides, as we said from the start of the game. Uh, he caught probably a lot of damage on Raven and on the guys that were yeah. trying to snipe Kazna down. Foolish mistake though from Raven, that can't happen. I don't know. I mean, tactical team mistake, his personal mistake, whatever it was. Not only his, like, he was not the only one badly positioned for yeah, this yeah. kind of engagement. Latencer as well also pushing it at one point in a bat for three times. A lot of chaotic plays on Savage Squad side. And now we will see Kazna defending mines and uh, Savage Squad will attack and they really don't attack it well. Mostly it just ends up in some kind of YOLO and if it works, it works. Yeah, uh, we'll see what they bring this time though on mines. Perhaps they can pick up at least one round. Um, you don't want to lose 5 0, so let's hope they can get at least this very round to show what they can do. They are going to be attacking. It's curious to see what Savage Squad bring because they can surprise us. They sometimes do. Maybe they bring 5 Forge this time. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a meme, that's for sure. But they chose a normal attacking lineup with Type 5 Heavy, actually. That's a peculiar one, but Kazna playing super heavy against them. E3, E4, double 50B again. Double 50B is a mouse. We saw them yesterday hide 50Bs, but uh, it's already played out, so maybe they will not play the same. The only problem for them was actually the light tank that was climbed up in that game. Otherwise, those 50Bs would do rather well. The problem for Kazna, the problem for Kazna in this kind of engagement is because they're playing three matches this uh, week. So every day they play one match. So that means some maps they will have to recycle tactics. This might be one of those maps because uh, Mines and uh, Sand River are the only maps that repeat for them. But there is instantly engagement here for Savage Squad. Latenser is crossing and he took one shot from Isne. So only one shot on a cross. I would say that's even cheap. Yeah, that's very cheap actually for that. Raven now looking to get a connection onto the back of that third from Yizna. Yizna seems to be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to be forced to drive down and let's see how much damage he takes for this. Latenser clipping out on towards that IS-7 already gets three connections. Wants to do some a little bit more, has one more shot. He bounces that one though. He split his name in half, but Danny kind of carelessly positioned there also is on half HP. The problem is they I mean no one can effectively support Isne except himself. Like he can return one shot and then he can get clipped by Latenser. There is a potential for that. But we will see. If he positions well, it's gonna be really hard for Latenser to pen him actually in that position. Well that's a good start though from Stavage Kodi. Isne is now trying to reposition Danny. Doesn't seem to be peeking through the bush. It's now reloaded. They spot out Yizne here. They could kill him. Yizne gets spotted now, though. Danny's gonna peek out. Can he get the connection? He doesn't. He bounces off and he takes that big one in return. Danny needs to be careful here in that bad shot. He's down low. Already bounced two on the back of Yizne. Yizne should have been dead for this. Danny, every shot he gives, he receives two back. That's the name of the game. But Piotr here, this is the problem and he's on fire. No fire extinguisher also. Will he burn to death? No, no, he'll just survive. But Danny in the meantime goes down though, overextending, peeking out too far. Diplomat delivers a big blow on towards Raven. He is now in the safe position though. He should not have gotten there. But Savage Squad, the HP is still in their favor. They're just one gun down. But Piotr's a non-factor. Unbelievable here that he's actually survived and it's gonna be super hard for Savage Squad now to dig him out from this trench here, especially because Latenser is the only one who can challenge him. And in, even if they do, there is a lot of tanks from Kazna that actually have full HP here. Piotr, Piotr is the one with the problem. 
and uh, maybe he can even get splashed by Type 5 in some some peculiar situation here. Savage Squad is holding the hill. That's very nice. Uh, there is two and a half minutes in the game. There was a lot of engagement by both teams, but at the moment, Kazna definitely defending. They have nothing. They have no reason to worry. They have no reason to go anywhere. No, Latens. Latens. Uh, yeah, he took a lot of damage in the meantime as well. HP still in favor of Savage Squad. I mean, that's the only thing they have going for them. Yizna's dropped down low, but he's alive. He's in a semi-safe position. And how does Savage Squad approach this now? Izne and Piotr are both on one shot, but so is Latinser, and he's pretty much stuck on that side of the field. Izne will play one-on-one on, one on him um. all the time. Uh, Sky1, if he tries to rotate, Kazna will spot it. So eventually they cannot push over the island. They are aware of that. They will have to push over the village side and middle and just hope for a better RNG or better shots. I think Sky1 just tried to splash Piotr, but I don't think that's going to be working out. Freedom in the meantime took a big connection there from Vetso in that E3. Drops him below. Uh, drops him around half. Ooh, Luti Pablo actually picked up Piotr. That was a nice blind shot there. Where did he come? Did I he wonder if it was splash. He, he might have splashed him. I don't know if he I hit him directly. Latenser, Ooh. though, in the meantime, goes down. And that is... Pretty bad. That's a big loss for Savage Squad because now they're completely losing any kind of pressure from that one-two line. And uh, the only guy who can do and go and do anything about it is Freedom now, but Freedom is also on half HP and it's a huge risk because one shot by Diplo and Izne can just delete him from the game. Kazan has a lot of material to also prevent any kind of push from the other side. Now they have almost 1k HP more. Even as defenders, they have that advantage that they, when they're pushed, they will just do more damage. Yeah, the question is, how is Savage World going to approach this one? Because uh, uh, we don't know. And I think Mojo might be good to actually uh, listen and hear what they're going to go for. No, I don't know what I mean. Like, if they push it to the house, we can try to kill yes. this guy. And uh, Sky has to like push up to here. Oh. And they have something on the... No, I'll put on the hill. Where? They have... I think they might have something here okay. because they got spotted. I think like... No, if... who? No, the E4 spotted. Like, if you both push to the here, I will from here just print 50 beast. I'll try to trade them. Okay. The fuck is that guy doing? Huh? Spotted me. He's telling me like a bot. Yeah, and if. Uh, Bernard, just so many players. Okay, take. I didn't even get spotted. Yeah, start going to the rock. I don't want to play bullshit. They're just annihilating me, you know? <laughs> no, they're ready for real. Go, Pablo. We go to the house, I think. Go. I'm not spotted yet. Wait. I'm not spotted yet. I'm not spotted with the type. I got their safety. Yes. The process... Just actually, the process shouldn't even be stripped. I'm here, Can you shoot? Double track. Nice. Man, look at how much he did. Okay. Go, type. Yeah, they're losing. Короче, я ушел. Давайте. Куда ты ушел? Мас с пушами. Нет, комбэк. Ты сейчас кинь. Это комбэк, easy. 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 Uh, easy. 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 I found enough. I found enough fantasy. Man, man who the fuck is this bitch? Ten million damage. Uh, Alpha. Oh, bleed. Давай скай его, one shot раздавай. Thanks. What? No. Wait. What? Kill him, man. Just kill him. Easy. I try. Him. Trying. 50 Don't B is try, also there. In next to next to E3. Right. I'm loading. But he's like a one shot, isn't he? 50 B, 500. Okay. Take this. Yes. Who is spotting me? Who? Where's the second 50 B? They kill me Latin if I go there. Oh, I have a. Mouse will kill me. Alpha, I have like 10 seconds. You want me to spot again this hit or what? Uh, 
maybe. Ah, I can do one thing from there. Okay, but then. A full clip. Okay, okay. 50 B. Opa! I can't see them. They're watching scary thing. They're watching me, yeah. Can I can't, can't spot the A3, huh? Oh? Ah, there we go. Opa! Finish him! No. Wow, D4 man. Fucking diplomat, hit me a cola man D4 oh. Ok, I'm loading Where am I being spotted from? Uh... Okay, Blad, nice, thanks for games. Roger, Davai, okay. yeah. Well, that was uh, entertaining. That was an interesting team speak. I was like, uh, I had the feeling Alpha was like entire game listening to a song. I have a feeling somebody's watching me. <laughs> like he couldn't figure out who is spotting him entire game. But this is a rather disastrous game for Savage Squad 5 nil lost here to Kazna. There's not going to be a happy memories about this one. No. Uh... There is absolutely no way they can break uh, this defense. I mean, too much HP, only three guns left in a game. Nexus, probably the best player of Kazna on 100% HP, got bored and he's just going, yeah, I'm just gonna go and find him. Yeah, and Sk1 might find Yizne. Probably not, though. Yizne gets a nice connection onto the top of that Yzne turret. Yizne still alive. I don't know how he's alive. Still alive and kicking. Some bad plays there from Danny, though. A lot of bad plays on that side from the Bachat. I was really surprised to see Izan actually cross the field not once but twice and, and survive. Uh, to survive. But it did happen, we didn't dream of it, and uh, the result is kind of obvious. Well, Nexus, oh, he got tracked. He's going into Ram Freedom. Maybe he can still do it. Freedom, the last one alive. Nexus on the chase. Freedom picks him up. Oh, poor Nexus. Well, a uh, last glory kill for Savage Squad here before the game ends, which is right about now. 5-0 to zero for Kazna, rip my any kind of uh, assessment of this match, 5-3, to three, that was like not even optimistic, it was hilarious. Yeah, it was very optimistic, I should have bet with you about that one, I would have won for sure. Maybe, but it would be a result and you bet you thought 5-1, to one, so... Oh, okay, that's true. Diplom